Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse here. It's such a blessing to know that so many of you are out there enjoying our YouTube videos. Thank you for doing that. Now, you don't want to miss anything, so like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. Why? So you will know every time we post new content. That's like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now, watch this. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jesse Duplantis. And I'm Kathy Duplantis. And thank you for tuning into our boardroom chat today. Yes. I want to do something. I think of all the boardroom chats we've done, I believe this is the most important thing we're going to do. And I'm going to do it for four weeks because you need this. People ask me this all the time. I've been preaching 47 years. Why? You know, Brother Jesse, I'm a giver. I do. But why isn't it working? Why am I not receiving the different things that I should receive according to the scripture. Because according to the scripture, Kathy, if we give, we ought to be blessed, so blessed we don't know what to do with ourselves. That's right. And yet the number one problem in the church world and in the secular world today is finances. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to deal with that. Let me show you how important this is. I'm going to have to tape this. I'm going to tape four of them. I'm not going to even change my shirt. Is it okay if you stay in your bar? I'm going to stay because we don't okay. want to interrupt the flow. I don't want to interrupt this it's flow. It's so timely. And, and so then, then after we finish the, the fourth, it'll be the fourth week, then I want you to take all four of them and put them back together and watch them, one right after the other. And watch how great, and watch your wallet start to get fat. Yeah, because the anointing of increase is on us. That's right. And I believe this is going to come upon you. Uh -huh. Now, I, I preached this many years ago, Kathy. Go ahead and interrupt me I was going to say that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So when you're going to hear what the Word of God has to say about your finances, how you can make, have your giving work for you, because the principles are clear. Amen. And God gave this to you probably 10 years ago, and you've preached yes. it in many oh, yeah. churches. We have, yeah. we have a book on it. In fact, I want to refer to this book a little bit because there's some okay. great testimonies in here at some point. But it's been a blessing to so many people. I remember you bring to churches, and it's just transformed them. It transformed them. Because the Word in of God Africa, does that. In poverty country. Now, we did something a few weeks back called the hundredfold return, which is God's financial plan. Mm -hmm. This here is what links, what makes the hundredfold work yeah. in every they're, area of your life. They're connected. So after all this is done, you need to go back to the hundredfold one and watch that too. So, so you you can quit struggling with finance. Mm -hmm. You see, and start living on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I preached this years ago. We have it a DVD collection called. It's called "Why Is It My Giving Working?" And it's a it, it, it's the four types of giving. Mm -hmm. And then we have a little a booklet that we Companion did. And book, people like yeah. to keep. I see them and the, people all the time look at me and go like. You know, in church, because they love this because it's changed their yeah, lives. Yeah, I used to do that. I think I'm going to put it back in my purse because, you know, I need to refresh your course. Sure, time yeah, time. praise the Lord. Now, there's four types of giving. I'm going to talk about them. One is the tithe. The other is first fruits. Mm -hmm. The third is alms. And fourth is seed. Only four types of giving in the Bible. Let me say it again. The tithe, mm -hmm. the first fruit, alms, and the seed. Now, I want to take one whole boardroom chat on the tithe. Mm -hmm. because we've had so much controversy lately in the tithe mm -hmm. that you don't have to tithe. Well, let me help you. You don't even have to get saved. You don't want to. You want to go to hell, you can go to hell. I mean, I don't, I don't know why you would want to. Mm -hmm. But see, no, we don't have to do anything. God gave us free will, and that's a wonderful thing, a free will to choose him or not to choose him, the ability to say no to God or to say yes to God. And you know, when someone has that free will, you really know if they love you or not, if they have the ability to walk away. Okay, so now I've heard, I know what you've heard about, uh, about the tithe. Oh, you know, that's under the old covenant. Well, let me tell you something about the old covenant. One leg of Jesus is the old covenant. The other leg is the new covenant. And Jesus is the center of both covenants. He, Jesus fulfilled the law, but he didn't throw it away. That's he right. didn't say, well, we don't have anything to do with this. That's right. There are great examples and there's great things to do that God told the Jews to do. But now there's neither Jew, nor Greek, nor bond, nor free. So now we are one, one people. So I want you to listen to this. So I know people say, well, I can't afford to do that. That's why you're struggling. You see, you need to start somewhere. I don't care if it's just a little bit and watch God do the most miraculous. Now, I want to go to Malachi and we're going to deal with this. What is the motivation for tithing? Well, first thing at first, it's not about money. And let me explain that. Mm. If it was about money, how come God hadn't changed the rate? This has been 10% since the beginning. 10%. Right. Now, if it was about money, he would change the rate. Your mortgage company changes the rates. Your credit card company changes the rates. Your, uh, if you finance a car, they change the rates. Right. Am I correct? 
God has never changed the rate. So that tells you this is not about money. This is about a blessing to you, hmm. a blessing that God can give you to reach out and do what you want to do in this earth because we live in an economic world. Now, in Malachi chapter 3, you want to say something, Kathy? Well, I just, can I just start yeah. off before you teach in the teaching? I'm about because, ready to go. I'm ready. Because I, I don't want to interrupt you then, but it's so important to know that yeah, we placed a few testimonies at the back of this little book and they're okay. timeless. And I just wanted to read one, you know, because we usually read stories and testimonies. Right. But this is so important to read okay, these read because... Put the it's, glasses it's, on. Yeah, I got it because it's tiny print in this little Let's book. Let's <laughs> It says, um, this is from, uh, let me see which one I want to read, uh, Arizona. Thank you for coming to Mesa, Arizona, and for sharing your message about the four types of giving. At that time, I was at a very low place, no job for a year, late on three car payments, no home, staying at one friend's house, and then the next. Since I heard your message, I've relaunched my business and have gotten caught up on my car payments and am able to support myself. To God be the glory. Your message on the four types of giving was, re was amazing and really stayed with me. Thanks for visiting the church and for really sharing such a powerful message. Well, so, so it's life changing for this yeah, person. Yeah, why isn't my giving? It answered her question. Or oh, I guess it was a woman uh, uh, from it, Arizona. It doesn't Could have been say. a man, whatever. It makes no difference. Right. It's time for you to live on earth as it is in heaven. Now, Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 says this Will a man rob God? I want to answer that question. Yes. Yes, they do and guess who he, he's talking to? Not to the church, to the preacher. That's right, that's right. To the preacher, people like me, the preachers. Will your man rob God? Yet, have, how have you robbed me? You say, where have you robbed me? In tithes and offerings. Hmm. You're cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. Well, that's under the old covenant, you know, in the old covenant, they tithe, in the new covenant, uh, we're under grace, we give. Yeah, but that, that's true. You, you, you don't, even in the new covenant, you don't have to give. You don't. You, you, you're going to dry up like a weed, but you, you don't. You, because God wants to help, you don't have to do nothing. But I want you to start doing something so God can bless you in the city, in the field, going in and going out. Now watch this. He says in verse 10, it says bring. It didn't say send. Mm. In other words, you ought to go to church. In Luke chapter 4, it says, as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day mm -hmm. and stood up to read. Jesus was a churchgoer. Now, I love uh, uh, online and I love social media, but if you have a chance to go to your church, and I'm not saying that because I'm a preacher, but it's the corporate anointing that you're pulling from everybody else as well as your anointing going out to other different peoples. He says, bring all the time into the storehouse. Watch that, to the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now, saith the Lord of hosts. If I not open up the windows of heaven... And uh, and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. So what is the motivation for tithing? Let's talk about this four types again. Why do we tithe? Obedience. He said bring. Now, it's, God, Jesus also, watch this. Well, that's under the old covenant. So is Genesis chapter 1. Be fruitful. So you're not going to believe that no more? That's under the old covenant. We're going to throw that away? No. Be fruitful. Mm -hmm. Multiply. Right. Replenish the earth. Subdue. That's under the old covenant. You ain't throwing that away, is it? Uh, and, and Isaiah said, by his stripes you were healed. You throwing that away? No. I'm no, you're not throwing it away. Do you see how silly that is? Now, if you don't want to give, you don't have to. I tell people on this program all the time, we want you to give. We want you to be a partner to this ministry. The, yes, why? Because of the anointing of increase. So that God can rebuke the devourer for your sake. He's rebuked the devourer for my sake. I'm not struggling financially. Look at me. I am not. I know what I'm talking about. You can, you can interrupt me anytime you um, want. It's going to be hard because you're know. very jump intense in it. Just right jump now. in it. I'm, I'm <laughs> wanting to get you out of trouble. I don't want to interrupt I want to get flow. you out of debt. I want to listen to me. This is not so I can get something from me. I want to get something to you. This is what God's saying. I'm not trying to change the rate. I'm not trying to make more. I'm trying to get something to you so I, I can rebuke the devourer for your sake. So tithing oh, is the way for recession or depression to bypass you. Why? Because you're living under open winded heaven. In 1981 or 82, there was a recession, almost a depression in the oil patch, what they call down here in South Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I mean, people were leaving and, and going from Lafayette and Homa. They say, if you go out, turn out the lights as you go, things of that like nature. bumper stickers. Bumper stickers. I mean, it was bad because Last oil, person out. Yeah, oil went down to $6 a barrel. Well, naturally, that shut down people's jobs and everything else. 
In that time, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me, because I was a tither, because I was a first fruit giver, because I was an alms giver, because I was a seed giver. That's four types. I'm going to deal with that next week. Uh, on each week, each yeah. one of them. Watch this. I grew by 30%. 30%. I mean, grew. My, my, <laughs> all my expenses went down, but my money shot up 30%. Not only in my ministry, but in me, in me and Kathy personally. We bought a new home in the midst of all that depression junk. It was such a blessing of the Lord. Why? Because God was rebuking the vower for our sake. Mm -hmm. So what is the motivation for tithing? It's not about grace. It's not about old covenant, new covenant. It's just about obedience. Lord, I just want to bless you. I just want to honor you. And one time I went to rebuke the devil. I don't do it now because I've learned. And I've said, devil, and the Lord said, what you doing? I said, I'm rebuking the devil. He said, that's not your job. That's my job. You a tither. Mm-hmm. I rebuke the devil for your right. sake. Verse 11, I rebuke the vow for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Not only, listen to me, this, this will blow you away. Not only has God blessed me, my stuff don't wear out. I had one house that the air-conditioned man said, if I had to rely on you to make a living, I would starve to death. Your air condition doesn't break down. It lasted 24 years. We had a light bulb in our shower that let a regular 60-watt light bulb. That was before they had the energy yeah, efficient Yeah, ones. LEDs, LEDs and all that kind of Lasted 24 years. What happened? God did not let anything touch anything that I own. I had cars that had no trouble with them. Zero. Amazing. Why? And I would tell people, well, you know, I'm a tither. I'm a first fruit giver. I'm alms giver. I, I, I'm a seed giver. Well, yeah, yeah. No, listen to but me. But you still had to believe that part yes. where God, that God would do it. Yes. So it was a faith concept all the way. You know, I was just thinking about how churches today, many churches, they, they're a afraid or they're, they, they refuse to talk about the tithe in the church. They may do it when you go to a teaching, maybe you go to a new members class or something Why like that. Why did you but use in the, the word afraid? Because I've just seen it. I've, I've yeah. seen it demonstrated. Fear. But the point was is that um, you I got like me it. off track all the time. But I'm going to tell you why I cut you off track. Because see, you said churches say that and see, they're preaching something in fear, Kathy, and how's that ever going to work? But what I met, was trying to get to is that they do mm-hmm. the people a disservice by not sharing yes. about the tithe and how important it is because it's a kingdom principle that when you put God first, you know, you have you have a right to receive this, believe this oh, yes. blessing that he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you won't even be able to contain it. But because they've been timid about it or hesitant about it because of the enemy is uh, on the attack against prosperity. Oh, yes. And, you know, that's because he doesn't want the church to prosper. He doesn't want God's people to prosper. So he's used actually part of the church to attack the message. That's right. But it's clearly in the scriptures. But I'm going to bring you back. When you use the word afraid, I'm glad, I believe the Lord told you to use that word, is that when a preacher is preaching something to you in fear, don't accept that. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Do you understand that? I, I, come on, sugar. The Holy Ghost want to come in. That's why I didn't want. I want to keep going with this thing. I realize I don't take back what I've preached. I'm gonna say it again. I do not take back what I preach. I study. I understand. Naturally, you get more greater revelation as you grow older. Right. As you go, but what happens is, I mean, if I kept saying, "Well, you know," I, I used to do that, but I throw it all away. Excuse me. How do I know when you're hearing the voice of God? Because you're liable to say something about something else you said. You see, we can't flip-flop back and forth and all that kind of stuff. That's why Jesus said, I fulfilled the law, but I didn't throw it away. Yeah. God doesn't throw away anything. God is a creator, and and, and, and he's a preserver of all things. Now listen, what this tithe didn't do, it holds God to his promise to rebuke the devourer for your sake. I'd rather have 90% of my income blessed than 100% of it cursed. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? I'd rather have that all day long. Well, Jesse, in this, when you talk about Malachi, he was talking to the preachers. Yes, they sir. didn't want to teach the people I'm about talking the to the time. preachers too. Yeah, he didn't want to teach the, the preacher of that day in the book of Malachi. Malachi was writing this 
under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as a rebuke to the, to the leaders of that day. And when the church leaders do not preach what the Word of God says, it Amen. puts the people in yeah. a bondage and they live below God's promise yes. and God's blessing. I, I want to read a verse of scripture from Matthew 23, 23, which really blesses me. I like the fact that it's in 23, 23, because it's easy to remember. Matthew 23, 23. 23, 23, because Jesus is talking about the tithe. You know, like you, sa you said, uh, mostly people think the tithe is only in the Old Testament, but it's in the New. It's, you could find it in the book of Hebrews. But also this is the words of Jesus. He says, woe unto say you. Say Hebrews again before you Hebrews. say it. Tell them in the book of Hebrews. It's in the book You'll of Hebrews. You'll find the chapters, tithing in the New chapter Testament. Chapter 7 Go ahead. and 8. I think it's in 10 as well. Okay. But in verse Matthew 23, 23, this is the amplified version. It says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites, for you give a tenth of your mint and dill and cumin and have neglected and omitted the weightier, more important matters of the law, right, which is, he says, defines it as right, justice, and mercy, and fidelity. Right. These, he says, you ought particularly to have done without neglecting the others. So he says, don't, yes, you should have done these, but you should have done the tithe as well. So it included all of that. And mm. they were focusing on little, they were, they were doing the tithe in that day, Amen. Jesus rebuking them because they were doing it with a religious spirit with, as works. That's but right. even the, but math, even uh, Isaiah says that you have to be willing and, and obedient. obedient. I think that connects the two. You can't just be obedient and not be willing because faith has to go along that's with right. your giving as well. I think that's a key point. People may give out of religious and they're resentful. They may say, oh, I'm giving the tithe, but I don't really believe it'll work. Or I'm they giving the tithe it. and, you know, uh, are, they resent it. They're fearful about it. Faith wasn't connected to it. Maybe they, they weren't willing. So those two things have to be uh, uh, connected together for well, you, it to really you, be to work. Yeah, like, I God, believe. I had a preacher tell me this one time, the most asinine thing I've ever heard in my life. He said, when I, I said, do you tithe? But he said, no, I don't. He said, but I've given my life to the Lord. I went, well, so has your butcher who cuts your meat. So is the person that cleans your clothes. They know Jesus Christ is Lord. What makes you exempt? Simply because you went to the went into the ministry, hmm. who, who do you think you are to say such a dumb, stupid thing? You understand what I'm saying? So is the person that uh, that works. Not they love the Lord with all their heart. We've all given our lives. We are the anointed and His anointing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why don't you just tell the truth? I just looked him in the face. I said, you just don't want to. You love money more than you love obedience to God. There you go. See, what is the motivation for tithing? Obedience. Obedience. You see, so tithing, let me go back to that point I said a while ago. Tithing holds God to his promise. Mm -hmm. And all the promises of God are yea and amen, which means yes and so be it. So when you understand that, you know, everybody's trying to take something out of the Bible and put something in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they, they want to be homiletical, hermeneutical, philosophical, theological. And how people say, <laughs> it gets so grace-minded. And I love grace because I preach on grace. But let me give you a definition of grace that covers the whole ball of wax. Mm -hmm. Quit trying to become what you already are. That's the problem with the body of Christ. They're trying to become something that they, they, they already are. And see, that's, called, that's confusion. I mean, by grace are we saved, yes, but that doesn't give you a, a, a license so you can sin. God said, Paul said that, just because grace abounds, sin abounds, more, no, God forbid. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So I tell people, ev everything I'm saying right now, salvation, healing, giving, promises of God, you ain't got to believe, that's not good English, but I'm going to say, you ain't got to believe one thing of what we said, or what this Bible said, because God gave you free will. But well, why wouldn't you believe what this Bible said? Why wouldn't you believe that if I be willing and obedient? Isaiah 119, you eat the good of the land. Don't you want to eat something good? I mean, now, people say, well, I'm willing to tithe, but I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if I can do that. See, that's not obedience. Let me tell you what me and Gather do. So we would give, I'll cut something back that I like so I can be a blessing to the Lord. Not trying to be... Uh, uh, hot shot here, trying to show her that I'm something. No, but I wanted to stay with the Word of God, and I've stayed with the Word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Now, watch this. I'm, I'm going to shock you with this. In Malachi 3.10, I will open up the windows of heaven and pull you out of bed. There should not be room enough to receive it. Right now, what's going on, boy, people are freaking about some of the banks that are failing. The Bible, uh, the, Bible the, the federal government says that the FDIC uh, <clears> will <throat> cover your... Uh, uh, your don not donations, your deposit up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars an account. Right. I think you can have three accounts. Uh, in a, you can have seven hundred fifty thousand one bank. It would be you have an account, uh, your wife have an account, and then both they you and your be, wife 
joint account. Right, they have to be named Named just like that. Different, three so different. So that's $750,000. Now, watch this. If you have any more than that and you're afraid you might lose it, you got to go find another bank. you got to go find something else because so, you, that bank can't receive your money anymore without the protection. Now, I mean, you, they'll take it. They'll but take they, it all day long. Protected. But you're not protected. Now, I'm not saying to go out and do By that because government. let's face it, the other day with that uh, Silicon Valley bank went down and the government backed everything. One person had $500 million in there. That's what they said on, on the news. And, and, and that's wonderful, you know, and come to find out it was a bunch of donors from some party or something. They didn't want their donors to lose their money. But my point is this, is going to another place because you're already full of what you got. Hmm. Have you ever, this, this is a good, I just, I've never said this before, it just came in my mind. How come when you're so full you can't eat another bite? Uh, uh, and then all of a sudden a cheesecake come out. It's always Red room pudding. for dessert. Watch that, <laughs> dessert, you go, oh. Now you can't swallow another piece of steak you can't swallow another piece of salad or a vegetable, which is all healthy. But if that <laughs> dessert come out, you go, hmm. Hmm. let me help you. You know what tithing is? Dessert. <laughs> it's saying, oh, Lord, I'm about ready to get blessed so much. I don't know. They say sugar's bad for you, but it sure makes you feel good when you eat it. Isn't that something? And we tried to use fake sugars, what they call a, a zero calorie, some kind of sweetener. One time me and a preacher, we ate something. Uh, they said, and they, you could eat chocolate, and it was a zero calorie, but they didn't tell us it would give you gas. <laughs> Boy, I want to have me and this preacher, we had World War Three. <laughs> and not just, not just regular, it was nuclear gas. It was like, I couldn't it's believe like it, the man. alien is in now, our belly. I, boom, most boom, boom, preachers boom. would never tell you that. <laughs> it's crazy. But I tell you what, We man, stay away from that. Oh, truck. God, we don't want to touch it anymore. Mm. Kathy ate something like that, and I went, Don't talk Whoa. about me. <laughs> don't talk about me. <laughs> I tell you what, man. So I, I, I could have run. I, I have a jet. If I'd have hooked my butt up to that jet, it'd have ran, boy. <laughs> everybody laughing. Right? I'm telling you. But that was fake sugar. <laughs> Look at everybody in my studio. They all bust out laughing because they've all had gas. Every one of them have. You know what I'm saying? But when you understand what Stay I can't, on the I can't believe I said that. But it makes sense. When you eat that dessert, why is it? You're so full you can't eat nothing else. That's how I think about giving. That's how I think about tithing. I say, you know, Lord. You that you that's so much for me. You've never changed this rate. Mm. You could, and I would pay it. I would give it. Yeah. But he said, no, I just want you to be obedient so I can rebuke that devourer for your sake. Amen. The reason why your kids are messing up is because of the devil. The reason why your car is breaking down is because of the devil. The reason why the church is going crazy and not willing to preach the gospel the way it is wrote is because of the devil. We yeah. got he is. You can blame him for everything. Right. Can I say something? Yes, you can. It's like I believe that the tithe is so important because it really connects us to the blessing of God. In the Garden of Eden, God uh, created everything. Of oh, course, he gave good. dominion to, the, to mankind. He gave them two gifts. He First, he gave them dominion. The second gift he gave them was seed, right? Seed. He told them, this is for your provision, you know, for right. you. And so God gave that principle. In fact, in, even in the Garden of Eden, they could have eaten. They could have eaten of every tree in the garden, but that one tree belonged to God. Keep your hands off something. That was the devoted thing. And the moment they that touched the, the devoted thing, the tea, the tree was devoted to God. There's another phrase they will use. They call the it's the accursed thing. If you touch the accursed Ooh. thing, even I mean, it go, it's everywhere in the Bible. The more you start studying it out, you see it. Even like when Joshua went into the promised land and he went to. They circled around Jericho. God said, don't you touch anything. You leave that. That's the devoted thing. And when Achan took some of that silver, oh. hid it in his tent, it was the devoted thing. Men died because of it. God wanted to give them a principle that you keep your hand off what belongs to God. And when you do that, you're basically honoring him and telling, Amen. showing yourself oh, yeah. and, and others that when you put God first, you invite, you, rec you honor him and you... Um, you show that you trust him with the rest of your life. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. So when we put our faith with our giving and put him first in the area of the tithe, well, we open up, the windows of heaven are open up. There's no restraint. The full blessing of God can now pour into your life. And, and you can be what God called us all to be. He called Abraham was a, and I'm, I'm on a roll, I don't well, want to take going, all your time. Going, but Abraham was called the father of faith, and God knew him. He says, I know him. He's going to teach his family the ways of the Lord so that I can bless 
the families, all the families and in the Genesis nation. 18. That's his. That was his assignment, and he did that. And the law but, of Genesis. But he was a man that followed God, put God. He was a tither. Yes, they he They give was. examples of when God blessed his tithe. They gave that first fruit. Remember that that uh, stuff he stole. He took back that for, for his son, his nephew Lot. Yeah. All the kings. He gave a tithe to Melchizedek. I mean, we could go for like a month just on this one thing. Oh, We're not going to get overboard, yeah. but just to show you that the tithe is everywhere. And it's and I love what you've been saying lately. How else do you put God first? How else do you put him first? Think about that. You did something the other day. Kathy preached at the Covenant Church. She's the pastor of the church. And when it came time to receive the tithe and offerings, I, and I'm, I was sitting, normally I'm not there most of the time, but she was, I was sitting on the bench. She turned around. And she's and you reached not in your purse in your pocket or something. I had it prepared. And, and my, you pulled out the check. See, check. we don't ask people to do something we don't do. And you said, "This is our tithe." See, we do this. Why? We like our bank accounts full. We like God coming and going. Hey, Jesse. We like a smile on his honoring face. Honoring God. I love being healed. Putting him first. And how else do you put him first? So when we get blessed, we go, Lord, this is yours. One time I walked into Kathy's. Um, office, I don't know, not too long ago, maybe six months, a year ago. And I said, uh, uh, I think it was $25,000. I think it was. I said, Kathy, cut a check for $25,000. Just give." She said, what for? I said, I don't know. I just feel like blessing the Lord. I can't impress God with my giving. I can't do that. I just had a, my heart was full of all the blessing he'd get. And I just wanted to be a blessing. And I heard the Lord speak. He said, you don't have to do that. I said, I know, Lord. I just want to do it because I love you. I just want to do it because You've honored me and you've kept me. Ladies and gentlemen, at the time you see this, I'm almost 74 years old. I got more energy. I got off that treadmill today. I, I mean, I could have ran around the house a hundred times. I mean, I was going, you know, at, at my age. And, I, and, 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 you know, a lot of my friends, are, woo, they have, uh, another one bites the dust. Every time I, I think about my class, I hate to open it up because somebody passed away that, you know, and been sick. And, and, and I'm not better than them, please. Don't think that. But what happened was because I, I'm a tither, because his motivation is obedience, not only has God preserved substance, he's preserved me. Mm -hmm. Now, if I died tomorrow, my God, if I lived a good life, watch this. But if I died tomorrow, I'd be in heaven. <laughs> and I would say, Lord, what will I have me to do? Oh, I just, it's just so wonderful. I'd rather have 90% of my stuff blessed than 100% of it cursed. I like that statement. Mm -hmm. In this little book, why isn't my giving working? You ought to carry it around your purse if you're late or, or put this in your briefcase. It'll if you're fit in your back pocket. <laughs> oh, if, it'll fit in your back pocket. If you want to get it, you, can, you just go to jdm.org and you can order it. You'll, it, it will bless you. But I tell you, I, I'd invite you. To, and there's probably more teaching you know, that will yeah. be covered. We've added new things yeah. in this well, chat because we're talk about this more first. things. And I like DVDs. Think if you had Jesus on a DVD or John the Baptist, the Apostle Paul. So I keep DVDs. I have, oh my God, 1,500 or maybe more than that. And if you'd like to get this, you can also order this. We're not just trying to sell you something. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm trying to get you out of debt. I'm right. trying to say, listen, I want you living on the earth. I like it when people come up to me and say this. Brother Jesse, guess what? I said, what? I'm debt free. We are so blessed. How can we bless you? And you know what I say? You just did. Yes. You gave God glory right in front of me. So let's give him glory together. Mm -hmm. Partners, that's why I ask you to be a partner this, to this ministry. 100% of what you give goes in the world evangelism. We're debt free since 1982. God's been so good. 82. Some of your kids that wouldn't have been born then. It's so wonderful to have walked all those years without struggling financially. That's why I want to get you. That's why I did this. Why isn't my giving working? The four types of giving. Now, I want you to see that and say that. So let me, I want to say it again. The tithe is a divine connected to the blessing. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to get other people saying, well, you don't have to do that. I, okay, listen to them and struggle. How many preachers you know are living good and other people are struggling? Right. I'm telling you, I, now, you can't make me your source. Right. I would. I wish God would make me a multi-trillionaire. I'd bless everybody in the whole world. <clears throat> I love giving more than anything else. Gloria Copeland said that. Jesse, other than Kenneth, you're the only other man I've seen that has such a God, a, 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 a passion just to, to give. Well, Brother Copeland taught me that, but the Lord Jesus taught me that, and thank you, Kenneth, for doing that, which I just, I, I, I just love it. But you see, when people say, well, get Brother Jesse, he'll do that. Well, yes, I would in a second. That's not the issue. But you see, once you make me a source or some other person, so 
you, you shutting down God's blessing on you. That's what I'm talking about. So I want you to think about this. This is the first one out of four. Now, next week, we're going to talk about the first fruits. That's probably the most misunderstood one of all the four types of giving is the first fruit. It's just amazing, you see. And some people think there's a second fruit, third fruit, or a basket of fruit. No, no, first fruit. So we'll be dealing with that pretty soon. And so next week, you're going to get that. Now, we're going to be in the same clothes because we're taping this. I don't want to lose this anointing, but I want to pray the anointing of increase on you right now. Yes. Heavenly Father, I decree and declare, okay, let me have your head. In the name of Jesus, what's on me and Kathy, and that's the hundredfold. Thank you, Lord. I ask you to bless every individual that's listening to this message. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, move upon them to understand this. Give them revelation knowledge. And get away from all people's opinions mm -hmm. and just do what your word says. Yes. Lord, I decree and declare it today in the mighty name Thank of you, Jesus yes. that we'll receive tons of testimonies yes. of people getting out of debt, financial blessing coming Thank in you, every Lord. area. Because you know what, Lord? Thank you, Lord. They put you first. And how else do you put you first? Mm -hmm. Especially in the economic world is when someone gets blessed, Lord, here's yours. Yes. And do it with a willing and an obedient heart. The hundredfold, God. I know you said some 30, some 60, and I like that. Hundredfold. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for it. I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, let me say this before we go off. It, I, that doesn't mean I haven't had struggles. I don't want you to misunderstand. I mean, the devil has fought me and Kathy. Well, let me give you a prime example. I couldn't wait for our 50th wedding anniversary. I know I look so much older than Kathy, got my hair so white. Kathy got a young face. Her mother's 91 and doesn't look 91. I'm giving you a compliment here. It's a blessing. I mean, it's a blessing. She, does. she doesn't look 70 years old. I didn't tell him to say that. I know. <laughs> you know she's going to be 71 pretty soon. But watch, she doesn't look it. Definitely didn't tell him But to say I that. really was looking forward. Let me show you how the devil fought me. Watch this. I was really looking forward to celebrating a 50th wedding anniversary. We've been together, you know. And guess what? The COVID hit. Now, and so we, I wanted to go. Had, to, I yeah. wanted to fly to Paris. She right. asked me, "What city would you like to go to?" Yeah, I'll let you choose. Yeah, she, she finally let me choose something. What a blessing! <laughs> <God. laughs> so I said, "Paris." Well, we could. No one could. No, nobody would travel. Shut it down. Yeah, I had to cancel the reservations. Canceled all the reservations. Well, I said, I, want, "I really was doing this." I, I mean, I said, "Kathy, I mean, we, we're going to do this right." Well, COVID lasted longer than a year, so the, 50, the 51st anniversary came to pass. Wouldn't let you go in. Okay, so we missed the 50th. We missed the 51st. The 52nd anniversary. Okay? Wherever we want to go, couldn't do it. Had to have certain kind of shots, uh, all kinds of different things, you know. So not, I mean, now it's 50th, 51st, 52nd. We still hadn't celebrated the 50th or the 51st, 50th. This is now the 53rd coming up. By the time you finish seeing all four of these, we are going to be celebrating our 53rd oh, well, at some point wedding during it, anniversary. Possibly. Yeah, during that time. Yeah, that's how it's working. Now watch this. And uh, now we can go anywhere we want. And so we're going to go. And we're going to celebrate 50th, 51st, 52nd, and 53rd. I said that to tell you that the devil hindered me, but he couldn't stop us. He could not stop. And Kathy found a place where we're going that I think is better than Paris. I mean, she said, you know, and I got to look at it, and I said, you know, Kathy's pretty good at that kind of stuff. And she checked it out. Yeah, so we're going to have a nice like time. Yeah, three days. So I'm supposed well, to be, go, hey, I'm sorry. 50, 51, 52. <laughs> so I gave you a, a, day, a day for each one. You get four days. 40, yeah. But I only get three. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the reason is this gospel <laughs> preaching calling is on me like white on rice. I must preach this gospel. And, and watch this. So do you. you yeah. You'll jump on this. I'm not complaining. I'm, it's no, she's not complaining. Okay. <laughs> but she's, she's made my ankle blue from kicking me under the table. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, I'm saying this here, the four types of giving, this is our first one. Mm -hmm. Next week is going to be first fruit. The third week's going to be alms. Mm -hmm. Now that you know a lot about because that's where most of the giving goes. That's helping the poor. And then the seed. Ooh. Ooh, that's where that hundredfold is. Now, let me go back to this and I'm going to close with this. How have you robbed me? This is in, a time, in tithe and offerings. Mm. So watch this. If tithing is not for the day, then offerings ought to not be for the day. Yeah, that's under go. the old covenant. That oh, makes oh, sense. Oh, 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 oh. Do you see how foolish and silly that is? Yeah, and you know, there's a phrase of, a friend of mine used, has said for years, I don't know if it was original with him, but he'd said, you cannot be a generous giver 
unless you're a first and obedient tither. Give, give, give him credit, Kathy. I think it was uh, Art Sepulveda Art in, in, in Hawaii. Word of life in Honolulu, Hawaii. I heard him Hawaii. say this, and he says, you cannot be, he says the, the tithe is a measure of your generosity, and the offering is a measure, no, a tithe is a measure of your obedience, and your uh, offering is a measure of your generosity. Yeah. You cannot be a generous giver mm -hmm. until you're first an obedient tither. So everything starts That's with the so tithe. That's so powerful. And the tithe is not just, you can't say I tithe 20%. No, tithe is 10th. It actually, the word means 10th. Tenth. Tenth. And in the Amplified, it says, bring all the tithes, the whole 10th of your income into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and prove me now by it, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So that's the kingdom principle there again in there the amplified is. version, but the tithe is the 10th. So you have to be yeah. first obedient in the area of the tithe. Then you open up the those other areas for the offering, yeah. which we're going to start talking well, about next. Art Sepulveda said that, Art and Kuna Sepulveda, if you ever go to Honolulu, go to the, go to Word of Life. That's a great church there. It's such a blessing of the Lord. And uh, <clears throat> and you go to Jim Morocco's church, if you go to Ka Maui, Ma Kahului Maui. I, I love these people. They just bless. I love to honor them because they've honored me all these years. Partners, thank you. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to give today, we'd love to be a, we will receive it. And my God, put it in world evangelism. Mm -hmm. Just go to jdm.org and you can give and hit the donate button. You can give that way. You can use PayPal or you can text to give or you can mail in an old fashioned donation. Now don't miss next week, okay? Next week, the first fruit. And please, if you can, get this little booklet. Carry it with you. It, it, I'm telling you, it has shut down so much financial distress in people's lives. You ought to get the DVD set. I'm not trying to sell it to you. You don't want it? No, don't do it. But I'm just telling you, I want you to live like me and Kathy live it. Woman look pretty good, doesn't she? You know why? Because she's a tither. Not because of me, because both of us, we just obey God's word. Until next week, this is Jesse and Kathy saying we love you. We'll see you soon. Next week, the first fruit teaching. Don't see miss you it. Then. Don't miss it. It's coming to pass. See you later. Bye-bye. Okay. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.